your bite-sized daily roundup of the biggest news from the world of film. This is The Daily Reel with Van Connor. Good morning. Today's Monday, the 10th of May. It's the 25th anniversary of the release of Twister, a year to the day after the release of A Little Princess, and it's two years today since Detective Pikachu opened in cinemas. It's birthday to Keenan Thompson, Sally Phillips, Holston Sage, and Lindsay Shaw, and it's the day all of this was going on. Wonder Woman actress Gal Gadot has opened up about the experiences she had with disgraced director Joss Whedon on the set of the Justice League reshoots. It's been known for a while now that Gadot suffered her own issues with the Buffy the Vampire Slayer creator, something she's mentioned in passing a handful of times, usually as her way of backing up the claims of cyborg actor Ray Fisher. In the intervening months, however, a multitude of women from the Buffy and Angel sets led by Charisma Carpenter have come out in solidarity, accusing the director of bullying, harassment, and sexually inappropriate behavior. Whedon has, through a spokesperson, denied everything. Gadot worked with Whedon in 2017, after a family tragedy drove original Justice League director Zack Snyder to step down from the project. Whedon, the director of Marvel's The Avengers and its sequel Avengers Age of Ultron, was then brought in to do reshoots and to make changes in order to make the film more broadly appealing for the studio. The Israeli-born Gadot recently sat down with N12, a TV channel in her home country, that asked about her experience with Whedon following the latest round of allegations. Gadot, for her part, was to the point, telling the channel, I had my issues with Joss and I handled it. He kind of threatened my career and said if I did something, he will make sure my career is miserable. I took care of it on the spot. Gal Gadot can next be seen in Netflix's espionage thriller Red Notice, opposite Ryan Reynolds and Dwayne Johnson, out later this year. Have you never met a man before? But what about your father? I had no father. My mother sculpted me from clay and I was brought to life by Zeus. Well, that's neat. Actor and comedian Jim Carrey has bought one of his co-workers a car. Most workplaces show their appreciation to their staff with the odd pizza party here and there, but evidently film sets are a little different. As such, Carrey decided to reward the hard work of the Sonic the Hedgehog 2 crew with a free raffle to win a $40,000 Chevy Blazer RS. The brand new motor was reportedly won on Friday morning by one of the grips. Sonic the Hedgehog 2, meanwhile, is set to wrap up filming shortly, and will see the return of Ben Schwartz's eponymous Blue Blur, along with human co-stars James Marsden, Tika Sumter, and Carrie's evil Dr. Robotnik. The sequel's also been confirmed to see the full introduction of Sonic's iconic best friend Miles Tails Prower, introduced in the first film's post credit sequence, as well as longtime frenemy Knuckles the Echidna. The sequel will again be directed by Jeff Fowler and is set to speed into cinemas on the 8th of April next year. You've never seen anything like this before. It says on the top banana, in a world full of hungry little monkeys. Allow me to clarify. In a sequentially ranked hierarchy based on level of critical importance, the disparity between us is too vast to quantify. Agent Stone? The doctor thinks you're basic. And finally, This Is Us star Justin Hartley will star opposite Rebel Wilson in high school comedy Senior Year. The film, to be directed by Alex Hardcastle from a script by Brandon Scott James, Andrew Nauer, and Arthur Pielli, will see a former cheerleader waking up from a 20-year coma and returning to high school in an attempt to finally realize her dream of becoming prom queen. The cast list also includes Angori Rice, Sam Richardson, Zoe Chow, Mary Holland, and Rick and Morty's Jerry himself, Chris Parnell. Hartley, also known for playing the Emerald Arch of the Green Arrow in Smallville, can next be seen in Dirty Grandpa director Dan Mazur's upcoming comedy The Exchange, which follows a lonely, nerdy, and socially awkward teenager ordering a mail-order best friend, only to receive a cologne-soaked, chain-smoking, sex-obsessed wild child instead. So it's that one episode of The Inbetweeners, but it's due out later this year. No release date for senior year, meanwhile, has been finalized. Clark Kent's hosting morning television. I can't wait to watch him show me how to bake a cake. Celebrating its 25th anniversary, a brand spanking new HD master of Keanu Reeves' cyberpunk thriller Johnny Mnemonic's out on digital from today, along with a Logan Lerman John Hawke's father-son dramedy End of Sentence. On the DVD and Blu-ray aisle today, you can find the documentary A Glitch in the Matrix, Sequin in a Blue Room, The Little Things, and the animated superhero adventure Justice Society World War II. 
Netflix today are adding the Sam Claflin crime thriller The Corrupted, indie thriller Deadly Switch, the silent movie classic The Outlaw and His Wife, and the 1956 Swedish drama It Is Never Too Late. Climate of the Hunter comes to Shudder, and Valerian Barovnik's letter from Paris is new to Mubi. Preview offerings for the day include The Next Karate Kid and A Few Good Men on Sony Movies, Behind Enemy Lines, Mission Impossible, Rogue Nation, and Capernaum on Film 4, Hacksaw Ridge is on the Paramount Network, and Rambo First Blood Part 2 and Conan the Destroyer on ITV4. While the Sky Cinema are now premiere today is the animated adventure The Fairy Princess and the Unicorn. That was the Daily Reel for Monday, May the 10th. Keep it cinematic, and we'll see you tomorrow. The Daily Reel is a Candy Store production, presented by Van Connor and written by Calvin Prickett. All information is correct at the time of writing, and source links are in the description for each episode. Don't forget to rate, review, and subscribe on all good podcast platforms, or ask Alexa to install the Daily Reel skill for your morning flash briefing. Follow the show on social at Daily Reel Pod, and we'll be back every weekday. Until then, keep it cinematic. Thank you.